I, as a comedian, Sonny, do you kind of feel off that? Like, let's say in the audience, you get a reaction from somebody and it makes everyone laugh. And you're in a sense, you're beefing them. Like, you're making someone feel slightly uncomfortable. You're getting them out of their own uh, skin in a way, right? Uh, no, completely wrong. Uh, that's not, I'm not beefing anybody. <laughs> that, that even sounded weird. Uh, but no, if there's a heckler and, you know, you shut him down, yeah, you feel good. But I'd rather just not do that. I'd rather not have someone talk you know, while I'm talking on stage. Uh, not in real life, obviously. But like, if, if I'm doing a performance and someone is like making my job harder, I don't like that. Kind of like rapping. Uh, you would think like, uh, no, no, you know what? A, a beef is more a roast, mm. right? Where you like sit down, you think about what you're gonna say for like a diss track, and then you like make fun of somebody for whatever. Well, you did a good job, like, you know, just to let everyone know about how you and I know one another, right? Like, I got to MC the show you headlined, yes. right? And that was through the Universal Radio Network. And, like, when you came on stage and right away, you're like, yo, Kenny, man, like, you know, you don't got Jordans on. Like, you think you got Jordans on, but let me tell you like, what you're really well, wearing, right? Well, the first thing I said was give it up for Kenny for giving that motivational speech. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't that, like, your stuff wasn't funny. It was that in the beginning, you li literally try to motivate everybody. Yeah. That was legitimately it. it but was. then in the middle, you had jokes, yeah. right? So then that was that. And then people were, and then the second thing was, um, you said, your grandmother said one word and you proceeded to say three words. So that was, <laughs> it was just because like I really like comedy. So I watch it. Totally. So I'm sitting there watching and I'm like, I'm sure I'm not the only one that thought of this. Like that picked this up. And then, yeah, the last thing was the fact that you said, I have Jordans on and, and they weren't Jordans. That was good. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Do you feel like an MC has to have jokes prepared? Like, would you have been like, yo, man, like, that's weird. Like, this MC Kenny guy, like, yeah, no jokes. Like, if someone's going to MC a comedy night, they should kind of fit the mold. Um, a lot of people think MCing isn't doing comedy. Uh, and I don't know where they got this misconception from. Uh, my friends, even. I go, hey, you'll come to a sh my show. I'm, I'm hosting. I'm MCing. He's like, yeah, yeah, but when are you going to do comedy? He's like, I'm doing it all night. So, uh, and I think uh, the States has a lot to do with that misconception. When you do comedy in America, the host is the newest person. They're, they're starting to switch it in some shows. But the host is the newest person. Um, and then it goes, you know, like a guest spot. Uh, and then your opener and then the headliner. In Canada, the headliner and the host are synonymous you can switch them because the host has to control the show. They have to make everybody welcome and get everybody into it and laughing. And then they bring on the new person that's going to do their best seven minutes. And then the, the opener and then the headliner like keeps it all together. But then if at any point the show goes off the rails, the host can then come back and, and, you know, get them back to where they need to be. So that's why it's a little different. Like uh, anytime someone does an event, you were great, by the way. I, I talked to, uh, uh, we did the, uh, uh, what was it? What radio station was it? Uh, 1440. Yeah, yeah 1440. Yeah. I, I had an interview. Full switch, like, yeah. The yeah. Universal Radio Network. Turn up, you know? We, we did the show, and I, and I, and I uh, during the interview, I praised you for doing such a good job. Nice, like, you, you had some good jokes. Uh, you got everybody uh, involved and hyped, uh, and it was great. But that's, yeah, that's the role of the, the host, to get everybody involved. Do jokes so they know what they sound like and then start the show. <laughs> Aside from the headliner, right? I find you make a good point, man. Like I think about weddings. I think about other times where there's the host. If the MC is completely like not bringing the vibe, then it's not there. Like aside from yeah. the reason why everyone came, right? You go to a wedding, you're like, yeah, I'm here for my cousin getting married. We're here to celebrate their love. But the host sucks. <laughs> like you're just waiting for the dance floor to rip up and then you look forward to that part of the night, right? Exactly. And um uh, so many times after a show, uh, if it's like a really, really good host uh, that everybody enjoys, there's always one person that goes, hey, you're really funny too. You should think about doing comedy. It's like, what do you think I was doing for 30 minutes? <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah. That's such a good yeah. point. What uh, what got you in a comedy, man? Like, was it one of those things where, because I'm curious about this with you, where all your life, was it one of those things backstory-wise where you made people laugh and it just came like really easy to you? Or was it something that you kind of like had to work on because you just loved it so much? No, no. It, I mean, it came easy. But here's what people don't, uh, like, I think, think about. 
Uh, everyone just goes, were you a funny kid? Who wasn't a funny kid? <laughs> Kids are hilarious. They're racist. Like, they're the best, you know? <laughs> Kids will tell you if you're fat, right? And they're like, why? They're honest, yeah, right? Yeah, super Until honest. Until you tell them not to be. Yeah, and then, and then like, as a kid, too, like, my nephew, he, like, he knows the pocket. Like, he knows what he's doing, right? So he is hilarious, um, but everyone is. It's just, uh, yeah, I really like comedy, and then one day I decided to do it, and then here we are. Nice. That's cool, man. Yeah, what got, what got you into rapping? Uh, I've always wanted to, I, I love music, but I think the one pivotal moment was when I went to a J. Cole concert mm. and I saw him perform at the Shaw Conference. This was before he was like yeah, before big, was. big. And uh, just, just watching him sway the crowd, everyone like rapping and like just that that poise and just everything about that concert. And I was like, man, let me, I just want to go into the studio. Like I love being creative. I like, I make videos, X, Y, Z. And uh, I was like, I want to try and make a song. And then that process and that that domino effect. And I was just like, I, I, I'm hooked yeah. from the writing process to the studio to making the, the videos and, and whatnot. So. Yeah. And what a good what inspiration, like J. Cole, right? Like if, yeah. You could have went completely south if you went to a Takashi 6 ix 9 Yeah, yeah. Or, or like <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. pump. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. This is easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, what about MMA for you? Like how I got into it? Yeah. Oh, man. I was like... Because no one says, like, you know, I want to get punched in the mouth. Yeah. yeah. You know, man, it, I just had <laughs> so much energy, man. Growing up, I used to watch, like, Dragon Ball Z. I used to watch... Uh, you know, I used to play Tekken and Street Fighter with my brother as a kid. And I just... <laughs> me and my brother, before even getting into fighting, we'd, like... We'd always scrap. We'd wrestle. We'd look in front of the mirror. We'd, like, try and fuse each other together. Like, I don't know if you guys are Dragon Ball Z fans, but, like, we try and turn into Gotenks, right? Yeah. Like, we just did stupid as shit, like, trying to, like, throw out Kamehamehas out of our hands. <laughs> and my dad would be like, man, these guys' imagination and their energy, like, I got to put these kids into, like, something martial art related, right? So, uh, there was an ad in the newspaper in our community league where uh, there was, like, Taekwondo going down. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the first three kids to sign up, and I never looked back, man. Oh, wow. You know, I did Taekwondo. I did that for, like, four years um, being one of the first students, I got really involved in teaching the classes and I just like from there never looked back, man. I thought, I thought it was so cool to be able to like give back and teach other people how to kick and punch. And then <laughs> what ended up happening, this was crazy, man. I don't talk about this a lot, but our first instructor kind of fleed the, the, the dojo. He bounced, he got this personal shit happened. He left the city and the instructor that was kind of underneath him, he took over. So it's him and this other guy who always, when he came in, he just reeked of marijuana. Like I'm like I'm like 11 years old. I'm like yo, like what's what's this sensei doing when he's not in the building, right? So both of them kind of were just leading the shop, and my brother and I were kind of like, ah, this place is kind of going under. And it was right beside Lee Gardens on the West End, right? So I don't know if you guys know where that is, but um, it was like in this like dodgy little commercial plaza. And uh, after that, we're just like, let's go, let's go find where people are training. And my brother got into MMA when I was in Taekwondo. So mm. he, he started at like 14 years old. And we both went at the time downtown Legends Training Center. And that's where like all the people were training MMA. And just never looked back, man. It was like it was the one thing in my life that stuck. Yeah. You know, I like try a bunch of different shit. But like ever since I was nine, man, I was like, you know what? I love kicking and punching things. Yeah, you think with the imagination and then like the energy, you'd go to wrestling. Like professional wrestling. You know, WWE. Oh, oh also so WrestleMania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right yeah, man. How many times my cousin said that? He's like, bro. He's like, I'll be your manager. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? He's like, with your like imagination and your attitude, get into that. And it's funny, like, there's there's more money in WrestleMania and then like Raw and oh, yeah. SmackDown than there is in, in the UFC. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Logan yeah, Paul's on to something. Because UFC, yeah, you need to get sponsored. Like only the top earners make money. You know, the everyone else needs to get sponsored and like, you know, get fight of the night, and that's why. The, the undercard is always super entertaining because they're trying to get they're trying to get that bonus. It's so true, yeah. man. They're, yeah. trying to, they're trying to get that bonus. They're trying to stay. Yeah. Like the, the thing is that I find I find a lot of uh, people don't realize about fighters. Like Chill Sonnen says this is he's like, man, like you got to have a personality. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you're not going to bring in some level of entertainment, knowing and accepting that you're a cage fighter, like you're going in there with shorts on, ready to kill another guy, and, and you're just going to go with just the talent that you have. Like, being a good martial artist aside with the whole respect factor, you gotta bring the hype, man. Yeah. Why do you think like every loud mouth fighter gets the most amount of attention? Because mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're bringing something where people are like, yo, 
First of all, I want to see if this guy gets his ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and him. second of all, shit, did he really just say that to that guy? Like, I, I find it very entertaining. That, like, mm-hmm. kind of back to the point about, like, picking on other people and stuff. Like, not bullying people aside. It's just people get really entertained by, like, calling someone out. You know, and then seeing how they end up showing up, right? Yeah. It's crazy. How about you, man? Like, would you ever get yourself in a rap battle? A rap battle? Yeah. Like, would yeah. You, do you, like, is that something that's still juicy? Like, I think it'd be cool. I think that, I think, uh, I think the best rappers are the ones that you don't see on the mainstream. Like, you don't know, man. There's probably like the greatest rapper in the world isn't the one on the biggest stage, I feel well, like. Well, that's what uh, 50 Cent said. He goes, like, the, the greatest lyrical rappers are these rap battlers, but they can't make a song to save their life. Exactly. And I and I talked about this in the previous pod where it's, there's a difference between rapping and making a good song. Mm-hmm. Like there's some dope artists out there, like some dope, or sorry, dope rappers, but to make an actual like song that hits, that's different. There's two, what's the difference? Oh, I mean, a song you need, first of all, you need like mainstream appeal, right? It needs to be a hit. You need a catchy hook and whatever. The things that like I like, like I'm obsessed with rap battling from Smack DVD days to where like I was downloading and not knowing what I was gonna get to now where it's millions and millions of dollars. You know, Drake sponsored an event. Um, these guys are getting they're basically battling three times a year and, and they're making, you know, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Crazy. They're, they're yeah. In, yeah, it's 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 insane. Um, but the difference is Lyrically, they're saying these things, which is amazing to hear. And you you get it, and you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. But to put that with a beat in a song, you may not be able to catch it. Yeah. Right? Like what, what Jay-Z does is maybe the closest thing. Yeah. But, you know. And then also, people take like actual songs, like their mixtape, if they're not prepared, and they bring it to battle rap, and they just get booed. Because well, it's like it's like yeah, this is just generic though. Wrong environment, right? Yeah, this is just generic. You you could be battling anybody. We want you to attack this person and make it lyrical and crazy and all this stuff. See, this is where I wish we could pull up videos. There's this one recent one I think you shared and you put it on uh, our uh, Instagram video. It was in India. It was that, I think that was you? Oh man. no! Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Drake just shared that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because he he uh, he tweeted out uh, he tagged sorry one of my favorite battle rappers. Right now, Geechee. Then he goes, Geechee Gotti, this guy will kill you. But he doesn't know what he's saying. Right? <laughs> yeah, but the whole crowd's going nuts. Yeah. yeah. That's solid, man. Yeah. There's, uh, the, I think that takes balls. Was it like, that one? Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say, it's probably like, uh, like if you think of, um, you know, just different forms of comedy, maybe, I'm not sure, but like maybe like improv or like freestyling is different than, 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 than making a song, than rapping, like there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's different sex to this, right? So it's like y- you gotta know what you are, what you're good at, and what you want to do in, in the game, right? I don't know how, if it's probably this, it's different in MMA, but like there's just different sex, and whichever one you specialize in, like there's guys that I would say, like again, the best f- lyricists aren't the guys that are on the main, that are selling out tours, that are selling merch. They're not those guys. Yeah, I but, mean, I, I, that's why UFC was created because there were different uh, fighting. Exactly. Right. Yep. Uh, and then so they're like, let's just see who, he, see who the ultimate fighter is. But then now it got so popular that everyone just went into mixed martial arts. Like you mm-hmm. need different disciplines to make a the best fighter. There's different flavors, right? Mm-hmm. Like my brother and I were talking about this, and and he said, hey man, like get this. He's like, from cage fighting, like from from let's just say the UFC happening, cage wrestling never existed. Like a component of you needing to know the game of mixed martial arts, that that was never even around until they started realizing, like, shit, I got a guy putting me up against a cage. Yeah. How do I deal mm-hmm. with this? <laughs> have you seen uh, the those things on? Uh, I don't know if it's real or not, but car jujitsu. Have you seen that? Oh, bro, that shit's crazy. <laughs> I have. The, the, the the on cars that or in cars? So they're in cars. They're in the driver's seat and the passenger oh, seat, my God. and then they go like three, two, one, go, and then they have to take off their seatbelt and then do jujitsu in no. the car, and it's hilarious. There's cameras all over the place, and it's so funny. Very entertaining. <laughs> it's so entertaining. It's, it's actually hilarious. It's on the same concept of like take something people are already doing and then put it in a different environment. Yeah, and see how they do, right? Uh, and then it also, but it also uh, needs to be a welcomed, right? Like it needs to, it needs to be. When when it comes to like especially music, uh, 
or like freestyling or whatever, it, you need to appeal to the masses or else you're just a guy that thinks he's good. Well, this is why people love Drake so much because well, he can do it all. Well, I mean, right? I was gonna, I was gonna go to Jay. I was gonna go. Jay Z said it. He goes, uh, he goes. Uh, uh, I dumb down for my audience and double my dollars. You criticize me for it, but you all, y'all holla, mm-hmm. right? Uh, lyrically, I want to be Talib Kweli, but yeah. my last album sold five million. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, truth be told, if if yeah, truth be told. I would rhyme like common sense, but my last album did five million. I haven't been rhyming like common sense. That's what it was. Mm. He's he's uh, unbelievable. Yeah. It's like Seinfeld. I don't know if you guys know the story about Seinfeld. Seinfeld was about to be canceled in the first season, the first three episodes. It was too smart. People didn't get it, but it was popular in Canada. So then they're like, oh okay, and then they had to like make it more like story based and and less, you know, uh, conversational. People love the the Seinfeld. Uh, I forgot the guy's name, but they made a TV show on the creator of Seinfeld. Oh, uh, Larry David. Larry David. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, yeah, that's fantastic. Right. Well, what would you guys say for both of you? Because on this topic of of being creative enough to appeal to your audience, like, where do you guys get your juice from? You know, for 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 you, Cash, just when it comes to rapping, and and then for you, Sonny, like when you're thinking of content, and like you, you kind of stop yourself and you're like maybe. You know, you, you go through something. You experience something. You're like, yo, I can't believe we went through this shit. I can't wait to say share this on stage. Or even in the same way, like, I can't wait to rap about this. Um, what is that for you guys as far as, like, where you get that from? Um, I mean, I can't uh, speak for you, but I feel like I have a huge advantage on you. Um, it's may, Like, music might be close to acting, but with stand-up, I'm, I have a machine gun. You know, this guy has a musket. Right, something happens to you. You're like, man, I can't wait to talk about this. You need a beat, right? Yeah. <laughs> you need to write the lyrics down. You need to go in the studio. You need to get them right. Then it needs to be mixed and mastered, and then put out to the public. And the public can be like, not really fucking with it. With me, I have a story today. I go out tonight. I say it to the crowd, and I go, nah, not good. <laughs> and then I just forget about it. Or, oh, great, now I can really make this into a joke. I get instant feedback so you te- you'll test something in front of a crowd and and like even like do you vet it with friends and family yourself or no like, I, yo i find this hilarious like this is gonna work no i did it friday i did all new jokes just to be like uh, is this good mm. and then you know some people like this there's this one joke that was phenomenal until i got to the last thing and then i'm like okay needs an ending <laughs> now i'm gonna work on that ending I'm curious, how much does improv play a role in in your shows, Sonny? Like, uh, and and your performance? For mine, a lot. For okay. mine, I yeah, I, I I like to engage with the crowd. I like to talk to them and see what they're going through, and then just. And here's the thing: I'm not trying to make fun of them at all. In ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, I'm gonna make fun of them. But it's because I think they're just nervous, and they're in a comedy setting, and so they're like. Oh, let me be funny. But I'm honestly just asking like just straight up normal questions. Like, what's your name? And who are you here with? And what do you do? And they try to, you know, try to do something that they shouldn't. And then I'm like, okay, well <laughs> now, thank you. I got this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's such a good point. Like yeah. just they, they shape themselves up in that atmosphere. They feel like they have to be cool or say something. It's like, yo, just, bro, be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is be like, hi, my name is Brandon. I work at Staples. I sell pants. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. You can probably still work with that though. Like you'll probably still create something out of that. Yeah, but like not to shit on Brandon. But like <laughs> yeah. when Brandon just goes, Oh, you know, I I party. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna make fun of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. That's too good. I remember I don't know which comedian it was, right? But he like singles out this uh this white girl with a brown guy and he's like, Yo, he's like, Who are you here with? And she's like, him. <laughs> <laughs> he like looks at the brown guy. He's like, "You're here with this brown guy," and then he like looks over at another guy. He's like, "He's like, why can you be with that brown guy?" He's like, so <laughs> points at another guy, like all suited, like looks sharp. He's like, "You with the wrong brown guy." Like, you have so many other options, right? But it's, just, it's too good, man. When you can engage the audience like that, it's brilliant. Um, what would you say like is the the idea of putting on a persona, Sonny? Like when you're up on stage, like for you personally, it might be different for every other comedian, but 
are you a little bit of a different version of yourself when you're up there? Like, I know with Cassius, I'll speak on his behalf, like, kind of that alter ego where it's like, yo, I'm omid by day, I run my business, by night I'm fucking Cassius, right? Like, <laughs> I'm bringing on this, like, as a rapper, you need that a little bit, right? Rapper, yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. 100% rap is, uh, maybe J. Cole is the only one that doesn't have that. Yeah. Right? Like, even Jay-Z is Jay-Z. Like, he's more, fla- you know, flashy. Um, For me, it's, no, me is, like, self autobiographical I am talking about myself and this is who I am there are a lot of comics that that are different that talk about things that aren't real to them or they make it real to them and then yeah there's other like Larry the Cable Guy right like that's a persona um, there's a bunch of people like that but Who's, what would Larry the Cable Guy be? Like, oh no he's literally a comedian oh he is oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He's, he's a part of like that it was like it was big back in the day, but like middle America, like redneck thing. Uh, so yeah, so and he and here's the thing, Larry the Cable Guy started off being just a normal comedian, like making observation. Like he wore a suit and tie, and it didn't work. And then he went into this like redneck character, talking with an accent, and it blew up. It just worked for yeah, him. Yeah, so he's like, all right, <laughs> all right, let me be this. Great stories are timeless. To be a great storyteller, one must bridge the gap between an alluring narrative and the audience, to pull with the heartstrings, and to shape the imagination. At Q Films Media, we're more than just a media production agency. We are a powerhouse of creative individuals, content creators, who specialize in telling great stories. Stories that are intimate and kept closest to the heart. Stories that are powerful and inspiring, that spark boldness and action. We are Q Films Media. We're here to tell your story. We are always unseen. On thing. Trevor Noah is a perfect example of that too. He always brings up stuff for like uh, some sort of issue that's happening in the world. He'll obviously add his jokes in, but then at the end, there's like a clear message of hope or optimism or something of that nature. I'm curious to know, Sonny, from from your end as a comedian uh, or as a comic, uh, especially now with cancel culture. Like, what do you think? Do you, you know, do you have to hold yourself back in certain realms of, 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 of talking points, like, or of topics or of issues in the world? Like, do you have to hold yourself back as a comic? What are your thoughts on that? Um, great question. Uh, I don't think cancel car culture is real. Uh, I think, so I've, I've been um, big into media uh, ever since I was a kid. Like, uh, all my university papers were on the media. That That's all I... I think it's fascinating, right? Like you, okay, I don't know if you guys watch sports, basketball. Yep. Right? We have uh, Kevin Durant and we have Russell Westbrook on the same team. The media picks Kevin Durant to be the darling. And they don't like Russell Westbrook because he talks shit to them. Right. right? He's like, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. So, all right, now you're vilified and you're the best. So, in the playoffs, when they made this deep run, anytime they lost... They would say Russell Westbrook's taking too many shots and Kevin Durant needs the ball more. And anytime they won, they go, Kevin Durant pulled it off. The very next year, I, I don't know if Russell heard it or whatever, decided, fine, I'm going to be a facilitator. Durant, I can pull up the numbers, went like four for like 36, you know what I mean? And nothing about him. Mm. Nothing about him. And then it turns out, this guy has like a fake account and he's a snake and like yeah, all this yeah. stuff. Uh, so it's just so funny to me that the media will paint a narrative and everyone will go with it. Okay. So cancel culture, who's been canceled? Harvey Weinstein, he's a rapist, right? He didn't get canceled. People found out that he's the worst and he got fired. Gian Gomeshi, he got fired because he punched a woman. With, you know what I mean? He would just choke her without her knowledge. You know what I mean? It's crazy. There's no cancel culture, but there are some people that will just tweet out some bullshit and people will run with it 
and without seeing the thing, uh, it's canceled, right? Like they're like, right. hey, let's let's cancel this person. His hashtag. I think Colbert was the first person that I saw have this happen, where um, he made a, a really smart joke about uh, the Washington Redskins at the time, uh, where they wouldn't change their name, um, and but instead, the owner decided to make like a um, foundation, like a, a charity foundation uh, for. Uh, American Indians, so indigenous uh, people of, of America. And he just goes, but like they're, they're, they're upset about the name and the logo, right? <laughs> like you just doing this on their behalf isn't helping. He goes, but that's just like uh, my new organization. And then he does like a very satirical racist name to Asian people of Ching Chong or whatever is what he said. Like it's a giant name. The show has its own Twitter account. So he has a separate one, and the Colbert Report has his own Twitter account. So they took that without a video or anything, just dumbed it down into 140 characters and put it out there. Some lady got offended and said, cancel Colbert, look at this, look at this, look at this. Mm. Now, she has like 300 followers. Again, cancel Colbert isn't, or sorry, cancel culture is not a thing, but... TV and news outlets ran with it, and that gave it the platform it needed to start hashtag cancel Colbert, and that who I th- that's who I think is the real problem with this. Someone that has forty followers doesn't have a platform, but a news organization does. Not everyone. Social media has given everybody a platform. None of you need a platform. <laughs> like you know, if someone says some crazy shit. I'm not going to like retweet it or whatever. But if a news outlet runs with the crazy shit, then now who's the real villain in this? Holy man. The can of worms you just opened. Yeah. Like, no, no wow. for real, man. Like people got to understand that CNN, watch me get canceled for this by saying it, but like CNN, all these other uh, broadcast news channels that I can't even name at the top of my head because I don't watch the news. They're all television. It's TV. It's like, you're going to watch that and they're telling you a story and a narrative that they want you to believe in here. Like we've got over 7 billion people in this world and the news can't cover everything. So they're going to cover the shit that they want to scare you with and and to raise a certain level of propaganda to now make you um, make certain decisions. And like that's a good example But going back to relating it to cancel culture because they're going to quote unquote cancel people that they want you to now no longer respect or believe in. And there, there are some people that, yes, deserve to be like, yo, like you fucked up. Mm-hmm. Did, did, let's leave it at that. Like, yeah. go heal. I'm, it, yeah. I was just to say, it's yeah. not just news, though. It's anyone that has a platform like um, uh, what, what's our boy's name? Uh, Aziz Ansari. Uh, the story had been out forever. But no one would run it. And then Aziz won an Emmy. And then one tabloid took it and then blasted it out there. Now they have the uh, the platform. And then so he got in trouble for that. For, I mean, I again, I'm not here to say what he did was right or wrong. Uh, there's two sides to every uh, story in this. And yeah, he could have been a predator. I don't think he is. But I've never met the man. Maybe he's the worst person ever. I don't know. Um, but uh, it's just funny to me that this story was out there and no one ran it until this one, you know, uh, magazine ran it. And then it was a whole thing of of he needs to be canceled. Not to, like, throw Aziz under the bus or anything, but I had someone I know tell me that they once went to Aziz and saw his after party. And this was when, like, he went to his show. He knew people who knew people. He managed to go there. And then he's, like, at the bar, like, right beside Aziz, having a drink with him. And it's just funny, back to the point of, like, are you the same person on stage that you are off stage? <laughs> the person that I know, he's like, man, he's like, I don't even know how to say this. No disrespect to Aziz, but he's like, I didn't even know that I was talking to Aziz. It was like the soul was sucked right out of him, man. Mm, wow. and, and he, okay, this is the thing I respect about him is he's the, the person I know. He's actually called him out on it. I was like, yo, man, like, y- you okay? Like, is, is this like, do you have an off day or something? He's like, he's like, no, this is just me. 
He's like, I, I just go up on stage. I put on my act. Yeah, I add a little bit more for like uh, pizzazz, but he's like, yeah, I'm a just really normal, boring dude. Oh, okay, so the soul wasn't sucked out of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he was just a calm. Like, yeah, he's not Different a yeah. environment, right? Well, no, he's just not a clown. Mm, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, 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 he's, he's not, not going to be like, hey, it's a Z. No, you're going to be like, hi. <laughs> Yo, so that makes me want to, I, I want to ask this <laughs> earlier, right? Like, do you feel like people are always expecting you to crack a joke? Yeah, 100%. Uh, but I, I, I don't, you know? And then they'll say that same thing, too. They'll go like, oh, for a comedian, you're not that funny. And I'm like, you know, I'm also a man. Yeah. And this isn't the right, like, we're at your son's bar mitzvah. <laughs> like, what the fuck you want me to do? It's, it's funny because if people ask me, saying, oh, you rap? Oh, can you fr- freestyle yeah. right now? Freestyle oh, right now. It's man. like, no, I'm not going to fucking yo, you freestyle should, You right should now. go to him and be like, yo, you're an accountant? <laughs> yeah, where's your where's your books? Yeah. Why are you not punching numbers right now, bro? It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's wild. Same. It's wild it's when, like, it's when like it comes dance. to artistic based. Yeah. And they're just like, like there's this one... Um, I went to this one fundraiser and they're like, hey, can we like, as a charity, throw you on stage? And then like, I'm like, who wants to see a set by Sunny Dolly? I'm like, no. <laughs> and then the lady up. next to me was like, what? Why not? Like, I thought that would be so cool. I'm like, like what do you do? Are you going to do it now? Like, I'm here as like a part of the charity. Yeah. Like, I'm here to have dinner yeah. and support this cause, not to go up there and work. Like, this is crazy. That's so true. So like, that's kind of interesting because we're talking about this in our business meeting with the team where it's like there's moments where you should potentially, wherever you're at in your journey, do something pro bono. Even if it's potentially like, oh shit, it's kind of getting put on me last minute. But if I get the chance to be in front of 50 people, like this literally just happened to me recently. Mm -hmm. I had McEwen, my university, reach out to me. They're like, yo, Kenny, like super last minute. But like, we got a business event. We need an MC. Like we've been seeing you kind of like do that lately. You down? And I swear, man, I had that moment. I was like, yo, like this is my chance to probably say no. But the thing was, I was like, okay, I asked the right questions. How many people are there and who's there? They're like, oh, like, you know, like business graduates. There's going to be some business folks there too. And it's like uh, 70 people got tickets. Though, that's all I needed to say yes. But I justified it when I'm like, hey, it's last minute, it's pro bono. This is going to get me some, get, get my reps in front of an audience. I'm willing to do it. But in this case, like when, when do you feel like it's uh, appropriate to like say no to something like that? Completely different scenario. Yeah. Right. Someone called you to say, hey, can you do this event? I'm at the dinner. <laughs> I'm there as a guest. Yeah. And I'm, and then it's just like, hey, go and do this. It's disrespectful. And here's the thing. They go it, dance, yeah. basically. And the thing is, it's going to be bad. And I was put on the spot, and I did do it, and it was bad. And I was furious. Because mm. no, and that's not on the thing. Yeah. Right? And like, and like so I'm just going to be there, and like, I can't do the jokes I want to do. Right? This is like a very stuffy, like members of parliament are there. You know, the mayor is there. It's, the lighting is not there. It's just like, all right, go over there and do the thing that you do that. And then like now now I have to sit back down and eat dinner with the people that forced me to do this. Oh, man, yeah. that's traumatic. Yeah, completely yeah. different. Um, yeah, I've done shows where where it's like for a charity. I'm doing one um, uh, in the summer um, for, uh, it's, uh, for kids to go to school in India. Right, like that's oh, like, solid, man. but I'm on the flyer, <laughs> like I'm in yeah. the book. Yeah, I know I'm gonna do it. Part I, of it, part I can, part. you know. So I'm not feeling taken advantage of. I get a tax receipt, you know. It's but, like my dad, man. Growing up, you know, family parties, and I just come downstairs to grab something to go back in my room. And he'd be like, "Oh, Kenny, do the dance." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, "What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Dad? Do yeah, the dance? Yeah. Show everybody your yeah, dance, yeah, man!" Yeah. I'm like, "Dad, I don't want to show everybody my yeah. dance." He looks at me, right? <laughs> hey, you better show them the dance. <laughs> and then now imagine doing the dance, and everyone be like, "Yo, you suck." <laughs> yeah. Now go back up to your room. That's literally yeah. what happened. I go back in my room crying. I'm so sad. My, my dad will do the same thing. He'll be like, uh, we'll be in like family settings. And he's like, oh, man, put up your YouTube channel. Let's show the YouTube channel. And I'm like, not the right uh, uncles, aunties, grandma, nephew, niece. And it's like, I ain't showing you my rap songs, yeah. bro. Like, oh, man. That's they're bad. like, it's so good. You know, dad, dad, and mom. So good. Put it up. It's like, no, I'm not doing yeah. that. <laughs> That is awful. Have you ever done, has anyone ever done that to you in a party? Where they just like throw your YouTube thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The worst. 
This guy will always play my music. I love doing always, that, and, and and not from a from a from a oh, okay, like, from like a good place, like, from a good like, place. Like, yeah, just playing. Yeah, yeah. It's not like hey, everybody, look, look at no, this. No, yeah. no. I like yeah. to do that, it very I, discreetly, right? Yeah, like yeah, I'll yeah, play yeah. it, and then someone goes, "Yo, shit, man, who's this? Who is this?" Yeah, yeah, like, yo, that's yeah, cash, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, that's the right way to do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Like just to, to just to be like, all right, everybody, gather around. You've had that? Oh yeah. Really? I got at a house party. Really? Yeah, and I'm like, don't. Like, this is not why I'm here. Wrong time to kind of get that attention, right? Yeah, well, I mean, no one wants to see it. Like, who wants to stop my house party, stop the music, stop drinking and mingling to be like my observations? <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and like, and, a, and at a show that you're not at. No. It's interesting to test those kind of things, right? Like, environment wise, I want to know your opinion on this because before I even share mine, it's interesting to know because you're going to put yourself in the shoes. There's this cool concept uh i don't know what it's called it's like outdoor comedy fest yeah uh big names are going right like bobby lee headlined it last year i went to it and i got some feedbacks from some people that went um what would your take be on something like that where it's outdoors well what was the feedback you got this is a feedback i'll tell you right off the bat some people loved it they ate it up other people were like you know what it was different because they couldn't really hear the intimacy of people laughing as well because it's in an outdoor space the people that loved it were in the front mm. right yeah it's just like it's just like an arena tour when comedians are doing arena tours i could never fathom watching a comedy show on the 300th level and just because people are so disengaged that around them people are just gonna be talking have you ever been to an arena comedy show yeah have yeah, you yeah I what, no, well, where do you, who did you go see? I went to go see Kevin Hart. Yeah. I went to see Chris D'Elia. Um, also, a couple. Um, uh, how, where two. were you sitting? Um, Kevin Hart, I was far. I was and far how was that? It's a good point. I right? brought me awful. right back to it. Yeah. And how many people were talking around you? Oh, man, it was ridiculous. It's, it's disrespectful, yeah. in my opinion. Oh, yeah, it's but like, like, like no one can hear. It's like literally you're, you're not even there. I feel this from sports too. Mm -hmm. I'll go see an Oilers game. I'll be like a lot closer in the lower bowl. It's the way. It's not better because of the view. Let's be honest. Yeah. You you can, in my opinion, at Rogers Place, see it anywhere, and you're getting a good like idea. But man, upper bowl people don't give a fuck, right? People yeah. are drinking, talking. Lower bowl, everyone's silent. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a very different experience. Yeah, because they're right? in. They're locked in. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. What well, comes with the price tag? I guess too, right? I mean, like that too. Yeah, um, um, that's a, that's like a number one rule of comedy is never do a free comedy show. It's because they're not invested. Even a dollar will make someone more invested than they were before. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, yeah, like you didn't pay tickets to see this for free. Mm. That's the thing from a marketing perspective. Is it smart to do shit for free or look at it like, hey, you pay what you think this was worth? Yeah, yeah, but but you need it beforehand, what right? Do you mean? You need to get the money beforehand. Yeah. Right? Oh. So that's what's hard to do um, after the fact. Like, hey, pay what you think the show is worth um, because you need them engaged, in, invested, sorry. Yeah, they got to be invested in. Mm -hmm. Ah, coming. okay, because then they put the money in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Sonny, I'm curious, uh, you know, from your end, especially us being, you know, brown guys, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, there. I'm mean, not a lot, but I'm, there's a few. Uh, Sonny's black, bro. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, <laughs> me too, man. I wish too. Uh, Subtle take from the comedy scene. But it, it's easy to label like guys, especially in the arts and the creative space, um, brown guys to go into comedy or be be comics or go into acting, right? Because there's a lot, or at least there's there's a few that are have made it. You know, Hassan Minaj, Aziz. You know, some of these guys, Russell Peters. Like, um, there's a lot less in you know rapping and sort of other realms of art and and and. Um, the creative space. I'm just curious to know your thoughts on that. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's easier for brown guys to get into comedy or, or, or the creative space, into rap, into some of these other like non traditional routes of? It, it's of getting career? easier now, and I think that's just because we've been in this country for longer, right? Um, but um, but yeah, I think I mean, Toronto has a huge Indian rap scene where mm. people are coming out. You know, uh, you know some of the guys. No? Oh. Uh, like uh, Young Fateh and all those guys? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, they're, yeah. Like they're, they're like blowing up there, uh, which I saw, which I was like, I thought there was more Indian rappers than there were Indian comedians. Right. But it's so, you know, it's so funny to uh, that you mentioned that because it's all perspective, right? It's all on like, okay, so 
my I, I've done movies with Nev Campbell, right? This is when I was starting out. I did um uh, uh, my own comedy special. Uh, uh, I did like a, uh, like a bunch of commercials. My mom had no idea, like about and didn't care. My dad was fully into it, but my mom nothing. I did a local like local channel M. It was called Multicultural Channel Chai Time interview. And my mom lost her mind. She really? thought I was the most famous person in the world. Is that Amin Aunty? Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she, yeah, she went crazy. She's like, do you know Shah Rukh Khan? I'm like, no. <laughs> right? Telling her neighbors. Do you and, know Shah Rukh Khan? And it was so, Kenny, you mentioned off the top, you go, we had, we had a great night. You know what I'm talking about. And the whole crowd was like, yeah, AP, right? Mm. And in my head, I was like, Oh, you mean the Oscars? Where an Indian <laughs> fucking what, what, the uh, an Indian movie, a Bollywood movie, won for best uh, original song? Yeah, yeah, there was that. Which is so much bigger than a fucking Juno. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. but everybody, you were so right. Everybody was like AP, <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah. like that's we a Punjabi, that's a Punjabi audience, right? right? So they were more proud of that, you know. But that was like so wild to me. I'm like, yo, like, like we just we got an Oscar. <laughs> that's yeah. so true. Which is what a big week that was. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's so funny. My client was talking too. Like you heard what happened to the Oscars? Literally, bro. I'm like, you mean Junos? So yeah, I thought yeah, he was talking yeah, about yeah. He's like, no, man. Look, like this one, the number one dance track. Which yeah. did you guys see that? By the way. No. It's like, I wasn't surprised why. This yeah. was some next level moves, bro. Their choreographer came out with a bang. The, the mm. choreographer and a couple of the dancers were from Calgary that danced on the Oscars. What? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why I'm like, sick. I'm like, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> this was cool, actually. Uh, I was once in India, and uh, this was in Mumbai. And uh, me and my family were like trying to figure out, you know, like what to do towards the end of the trip. And I, I tell them, I was like, guys, like, <laughs> India's got talent. Like, we've got a tour. Let's do it. And some of my cousins were like, yo, fuck that, man. Let's drink. Other cousins were like, yo, tour. India's got talent. Funny enough, it was my girl cousins that were like, yo, tour. Let's go. The so, last name is tour? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's what happened is uh, we all end up going. We convince everybody. And the tour guide, she's so funny, right? You could tell, like, she, she's good at her job. She's like, you guys are so lucky today. I'm like, why? It's like, because today's the day where it's India's got talent finale. So you're not, because usually you just see the set. Mm -hmm. So they're like, if you get lucky, you'll see the show. So she's like, you guys are all going, right? And this, this was crazy to me. We had a friend of ours that was Caucasian. And they literally said, because of what she was wearing, you might not be able to go in. Like a revealing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. too revealing. I was like, yo, like this is like seven years ago. <laughs> like I'm just like, yo, can they get with the program? Like India, come on. Because they might show her in the audience, right? So whatever, we, we figure that out. We go in and there was my like three seconds of fame. We're like, I, I'm standing up, I'm cheering on. They get me on the camera. But the guy beside me, he wasn't moving. Like he was kind of like, he was like shaking a little bit. He looked very nervous. And I just go up to him after. I was like, yo man, like what happened? Like, like why, why'd you look so nervous? He's like, because I'm the choreographer of the team that lost. I was like, oh man, mm. right? Like I fell for him. I was like, it was such a like, like here I am celebrating as a big fan. I don't even care who wins, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy that just came <laughs> second, like he's so cheese. Like they just announced the first winner and he just lost. And I was like, man, like that, that showed the contrast, man. Like I can't imagine the choreographer of this Oscar must've been through the moon. Yeah, for sure. I don't know why like as Edmontonians we weren't aware of that. Cause like they love to blow shit up like that, right? I don't know if you noticed. Any big thing that happens in Alberta, they'll blow it up, man. I read an article. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty pretty blown. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Um, I want us to uh, kind of get into a little bit, if you wanted to share this, man. Uh, like, financially, Sonny, are you fully, if you feel comfortable sharing, like, is comedy now fully monetizing everything? Are you still trying to balance it out with other side gigs? No, I haven't had a, a, a job in 13 years. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, so it's all, I mean, it all, it all just depends on, on what, what, how hard you want to work, mm. right? Like, I could have said no to this. I could have said no to the two shows I did last night. Um, and then because my entire, like I leave on the 11th, I don't come back until the 29th. So it takes a toll, but this is the only thing I do. 
So, I mean, I'd rather do that than, you know, anything else, really. What advice would you give to, like, let's say someone who is starting to dabble into comedy and they're wanting to reach this point? Like, they, they want to get to your point. Or, like, they don't, they, they, re, they don't realize that they can and they're kind of one foot in, one foot out. You know, what, what advice would you give that person? Well, I mean, I, like, and here's the thing. Like, um, I've been doing it 16 years. Uh, April 24th will be 16. Um, and I was not one foot in, one foot out. But I legitimately had a full-time job. And at night, I would do comedy. So I did not stop my job until comedy took over and took over the bills. So, yeah, I would, uh, that whole, like, you know, like, no, f- pursue your dreams and follow it. I had someone come up to me and was like, Sonny, I quit my job. I'm like, nice. And I'm like, uh, I quit my job for comedy. And I'm like, nice. He goes, yeah, I dropped out of my PhD. And I'm like, can you get that back? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Like, so it it's all depends on 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 you and where your position is, right? So if you're one foot in, one foot out, but all you can think about is comedy, keep doing it until you start making money in comedy that replaces the money you're already making. That's all. Yeah. That, that's so true. That's, and if you can do both, do both. Yeah. I like that, I like that man. Yeah. What about you, Cash? It's like, with rapping, you know, you have a different perspective. You have so many other things you dabble in and you still give rapping the time of day. It's not It's not what you're monetizing. I'm not sure if it's what you eventually want to monetize, but what makes you want to keep putting in hours of work into something that is, in comparison to everything else, not not the not the thing that's going to make you the most amount of uh i don't know success if you will compared to the other projects you have well i kind of I, I i agree with sunny where you know you have to you know there's there's the way you make money and then there is your passion right so they it, they sometimes they don't align right sometimes they don't align and if sometimes they don't have to align right they don't have to be the thing that makes you money um and, it, and like Sunny said, it's like, what do you want? Like, what is it that you want? Where is it? What's your end goal? Is your end goal to be that comic that makes money from comedy? Or is it that rapper who wants to go on tour and sell merch and da 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 da? Um, so I think you got to know what, what you want. And I think a lot of people don't have the, um, I, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but just people who want to pursue it. I think you have to put in the time, the, the hours, the reps, to, to, to really know that this if th- this is for you like i i've been rapping since 2007 right so like i started in 2007 and i didn't get serious until like 2014 2015 mm. where i was like oh okay like i've I, I've i have hundreds of pages of notebooks at home of rap of like me counting syllables and writing bars and metaphors and things like that before i even put out a song so it was like I've I, the the reason I continue to rap is not because I, I like the shiny golden nugget that you know I want to be on the main. Of course, that'd be amazing. Of course, who who which artist which which comic which individual doesn't want the bright lights and being on the on the on the biggest stage? But anytime someone uh, does an acceptance speech and goes, "I never dreamt of this," I'm like, "What the fuck are you dreaming?" About? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> who hasn't Why dreamed of that? Here? No, like you definitely yeah. any any artist wants that, but I think. I think what keeps me in the game is 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 the love of the process of just doing the thing. I want to make good music. I get the most like like be, the best feeling is is when someone listens to my song is like, "Oh shit, I I love that. I want to I want to listen to it again. I want to listen to it again, right? I don't want people to li- like look at my shit and be like, "Oh, that was cool. Next." Right? Mm. I want to make something that's timeless. That that, repeat. I want yeah, and that's the hardest thing as an artist, as a rapper, is to to create something that someone would listen to that project, that album, that song, and be like, wow. Like I love that shit. So for me, that's what keeps me going. And hopefully one day if I can get to a point of replacing my income with the content that I make, that'd be amazing. Um, but that is not the the pursuit isn't the money or the the thing. It's the love. I want to make something that is an, an art, art, an, essentially an art piece, something that's timeless, something that people would actually enjoy and care care about. Yeah, the longer I do comedy, the the more attainable my goals get. Uh, and it's not because I'm blowing up. It's just that I'm being real. Like before, it was like HBO special, you know, touring, doing arenas, and being on the Tonight Show. And now it's like. 
I'd like to pay off my house. That'd be mm. nice, you know, if I yeah. could do that. That'd be great. Yeah. It's neat, right? Like, I find just the more you spend your time doing the thing you want to ultimately turn into the, the thing, the, the better it turns for you, right? That's why, like, both of you are, are, are in those different circumstances. Like, do you feel like, for you, Cassius, like, if you didn't have your... Let, let's just say one day you went, yo, I'm going to go three months. Like, obviously, like, let's think about the, the money, right? I got three months. I can still put food on the table. I'm going to put my projects on the side with my marketing company. I'm going to put that on hold. I'm going to get maybe, like, one of the team members to handle shit. I'm going all in. I'm going to see what difference that makes. Would that be something you personally feel like would be worth your while? Absolutely. Would I you, think so. Would you do it? Oh, yeah. I'd do it. you do it tomorrow? Uh, maybe not tomorrow, but I would make a, I would, I would align it. Yeah, I, I think I would. I think, I, I think for me, I mean, I, I like to, uh, I, I, I have obviously everyone has priorities. So it depends on where that lands, right? Like for me now, I've put in a lot more time into rap this year because I want to make an album because I want yeah. to make more projects. So it's, it, it starts to climb up the priority list. Right. Whereas if, 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 if if you only have one lane, like we have multiple lanes, like we do this podcast, we do you know we do this. If if it's the one lane, if it's one thing that you really want, then yeah, put it put in that time. Like that should nothing else should be a priority, right? Like like Sunny said, you work in the day and then you do the thing in the evening until you spread that that time, right? And then more and more time can be put into the thing that you want. So. That's unique, and I'm picking your guys' brains about this for a reason, because it was like, recently, I quit my day job, right? And and you made a good point, Sonny, about like, yo, like, if, if what you're doing on the side at least is covering mm-hmm. what you were doing in the first place, that's a no-brainer then. Yeah. Right? And you can maybe keep that consistent for at least, like, six months. Okay, you've built momentum. And when it comes to time, I'll tell you what kind of did it for me. It was like that, like... That moment where I'm not saying turning 30 was is my turning point, but to give you guys some perspective, like 30 being around the corner in two and a half years in ju- in the world of jujitsu as a competitor, you get you, you no longer are in the adult division. You get kind of pulled in like uh, an older age bracket. So then knowing I only had this two and a half years to make a dent and impact in my quote unquote jujitsu career to then better my name and myself to have my own gym. It made the decision to leave that much quicker. I don't know if you guys fuck with that, where it's like, what if what if someone just told you, yo, man, you can only rap to like 33? Like oh, yeah. Now, now course, it's like, okay, course. wait a second. I only got three years, you know? And for me, I feel like as an athlete, that was kind of the driving force to be like, all right, I have my window. So now or never, I can always go back to the corporate world if I fuck this up. Yeah, I mean, uh, comedy uh, is completely different than sports and uh, rapping specifically. Because uh, sports, you have a small shelf life, no matter who you are, right? Like, that's why uh, in the NFL and NBA, they they ask for this big money. It's because they know they're out of the league at 35, right? What LeBron is doing is not real. What yeah. Tom Brady's doing is not real. But, like, but like legitimately, you have four years in a, in a professional career. Mm. So that's it. Uh, rapping now is pretty, is going pretty good. But before... If you're a 19 year old rapper, like that was it, like that was your heyday until 26. They looked at 30, like ugh. Yeah, yeah. Right, but now because of Jay and like Snoop and like all these guys that they're all getting older. Yeah, they're, they're so old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then also they're still alive because that was the thing. Yeah. You know, back in the day, they didn't survive. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, now it's like you know, like Drake is 36. So you know, like you get that. But before, yeah, like if you're a rapper and you're 33, like you're not making it. No. And the nice thing is now, and even even what I think about is like there's there's so many like there's an audience I feel like for for anyone online, right? So if, even if you're not mainstream and in the pool of everybody's attention, you can still have your own audience, which is cool, yeah. right? Online, like there's for example, I'll, I'll shout out Connor Price. He's a he's a rapper from Toronto. You guys probably don't know who he is. This guy has eight million followers on Spotify. He's a white kid from Toronto and he's he's found a way to market, uh, like make TikToks, funny TikToks of his rap. So he'll make a funny TikTok, a little skit, and then he'll start rapping. And he has like over a million on TikTok. And now he's going on tour. Yeah. He has never been on tour. He's never been on stage. He's never toured. 
He's never had, this guy has his own audience, he has his own tour. The how cool is that? But you don't, you'll never hear about these guys. You'll never hear about Connor Price and well, maybe, you know, as he grows, but, and hopefully he does, but like he's making a living off rapping and I would guarantee you, I could talk to the next five, 10 of my friends and I could say, do you know Connor Price? They wouldn't know who he is. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. That's like the, that's what the platform is there for is finding your audience. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, and like I said, now with comedy, especially, you can go forever until finding that audience. Like a Jerry Seinfeld audience is a Seinfeld audience, right? Like when he comes to town, you're going to buy those tickets. Yeah. And Connor has been able to do this with just a different platform. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is great. It's so I mean, cool, man. Yeah. It's really, really cool the opportunity that, that, that that's there. That's actually revived a lot of music industry is when uh, Napster came out. So... Uh, they thought that was gonna Napster was gonna kill the music industry because now you don't have to pay for a song, and all these old guys <laughs> that were not touring, just not rapping, they got a resurgence because people would download their songs, mm. and then they're like, oh wow, like so it wasn't the fact that people were they were buying less music, but they were buying they they were experiencing more of it. Mm. Like Chance the rapper doesn't charge for any of his music because of that. Everything he puts out is free except for his like one album, um, but he makes his money on touring. See, that's neat, right? Like I saw the <laughs> the other day I was in Dallas, and uh, the other day, the other day, <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I'm not touring myself, no. but it was my last competition I was in, right? And hold up, while I'm about to tell this, yeah, there you go. Sorry, the audio was a lot, but yeah, the other day I was in Dallas and. This guy, man, like this local rapper was just hustling, man, like selling CDs. The good thing was he's like, yo, make sure you got my Spotify because it's like he knows for the most part, hopefully he knows that, yo, man, like there's no vehicle out here anymore that will put like this CD in the vehicle because that's the only <laughs> way I'm going to be listening to this music, right? But like I can imagine, right? Like you got to keep adapting to how people are absorbing content. Something that Omid said even, uh, what was it, like two years ago? And we still need to get on it. Is Patreon? Have you heard of this? Of Sunday? course, right? <laughs> but, yeah. Have you heard of this? But, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe you were like me two years ago, living underneath the rock, right? But I was like, "Yo, what the hell's Patreon?" He's like, "Bro, like for the subscribers, like people that want to hear like what we say off air, like we could throw some of our conversations on there, which we still have to do." But it just goes to show, like you have to know where people are going to want to listen to your shit. No, it's it's not like a, a, a like it is a, a place where people go to but patreon is more uh to have a subscription base uh, off of your uh, audience already mm -hmm. so you know you you sign up for the patreon these are the things that you get if you get to a higher level on patreon you get more things uh andrew schultz and uh, flagrant too has the number one patreon in the world oh. uh yeah so and they because they say some foul shit uh that they're not going to post on youtube so it's like they show a clip Stop it. It's like, you want to hear more of this? Patreon. Brilliant. Yeah. And then also, then some people just want to support you somehow, and they don't know how. So they're just like, here, you yeah. know, throw, throw you, it on the Patreon. You have someone for that. This is jokes. This is when Ovid's like, I'm going to do my own. So he did his own. And then you had like, what, like one video? I, I, I don't think you had a video. And our boy, Sean Canungo, <laughs> he signed up for your Patreon. <laughs> you're like, yo, I got one person. I haven't yeah. put up a video yet. Yeah. You make a good point. People yeah. want to support you. Yeah, way, uh, it's right? just like uh, it's just like after shows uh, when I had merch. Um, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to make T-shirts and all this stuff. And my friend's like, yo, some, some people just want to support you mm. and they don't know how. And I, uh, I put um, my comedy on a little USB stick. It was like a credit card. So I had my logo on it, put it in, you can put it in your car, wherever. Sweet. And uh, yeah, I would just say, pay what you want. And that funded my tour. Like I didn't touch a, a cent of my actual paychecks on that tour. Wow. Yeah. Sweet. I just, That's sweet. It was great. I like that, man. You, you ever had like, I don't know if you felt this too, Cassius, but for you, Sonny, like your own crew or people you know, or people that like didn't really fuck with you, but then once you started to build up, your resume as a comedian, they came back and you kind of looked at that like, yo man, like what's this fake love? Like you ever, you ever like dealt with that? And like how, it'd be interesting to know how you dealt with that. Uh, no, I've never dealt with that. Yeah. Uh, I had a pretty solid crew That's and, uh, and the people 
that, you know, were out of my life and then in my life are just the same people that I, you know, wouldn't fuck with. Yeah. But yeah, there are people that I see. Here's a better example. Uh, uh, and it's so weird because I, I, I got jealous of this. I have a friend who uh, I met through acting. Him and I were on a TV show. Played my best. I played his best friend on the TV show. And now this guy blew up. He's in like every movie. He's in every TV show. And the same people that I would bring him around to, to be like, yo, like this is my boy. And, and they were just like, whatever. Now or like anytime he goes back to like Vancouver, I see pictures with him. Like, look, I'm with this guy. And because he's so jo- he's so dope and genuine that he like, oh, I met you. Also like hang out with you. But with me, I'm like, what? Like, oh, the guy I introduced you to 10 years ago? Now you like him? Wild. So that made me a little jealous, but only jealous of the relationship, not of, oh, like these are fakes. Because he is smart enough to know. Like when I hang out with him now, when he's like back in Toronto or when I go to LA, he knows. He's like, I, I know about these things. <laughs> like I, you know, but I'm, what, what am I going to do? Like draw a line in the dirt? No, get, yeah. let him get their pictures. Ah, you know, I yeah. fuck with who I fuck with. Yeah, that's true, right? That reminds me of when, like, a lot of people feel this way where they're like, yo, if someone just wants a photo with you, you give it. Or like, yo, why don't you spark up a conversation at the least? Get to know who I am and then take a photo, right? It's like a one time, uh, I was I was 14, man. I watched, uh, I don't know if you know the story. I watched the one of the biggest UFCs to date. It was in Toronto. It was when Shields fought George St. Pierre. And when Lyoto Machida, like, <laughs> like, kung fu kicked Randy Couture and Randy Couture retired that night. Okay. So it was crazy, man. Like 50,000 people in attendance. I'm walking in the lobby and I see John Jones. And this is when John Jones started to like get a lot of hype. Like people were like, yo, this guy's the next best thing, right? So a buddy of mine was like, yo, Kenny, like that's John Jones. And we're like, yo, like let's go get a pick. What? Right? The first thing I'm thinking, I'm like 14, let's get a pick. So I go up to him, I'm like, John Jones? He's like, yeah. And I was like, John, can I get a photo? He's like, yeah, I'm on one condition though. And I'm like, shit, like what? He's like, go find me a lighter. And I was like, lighter? Like I remember like my <laughs> 14, man. I was so sad hearing that, right? I was like, so John Jones smokes cigarettes? What? Like, what the heck? Like, so it's like, you know, like a fighter I idolize. So whatever, I go grab a lighter, right? I come back. He's like, all right, man, I got you. We'll take our photo. But like now in retrospect, years later, I probably think like I'm probably like the 20th person, person that asked him that day. And it's like, Maybe at a point, some people just want to like they want to entertain the idea of something that just keeps happening to them, right? Yeah, maybe, or maybe you just saw a kid and been like, he can go get a lighter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he can probably go that. Get me something, yeah, right? he can just go get me a lighter. Yeah, I'll just pick. I'm already gonna take uh, from with him. Yeah, that's fair. That's funny. Yeah. Have you, uh, Sonny? Have you had, had uh, any awkward, um, awkward uh, fan interactions or any with any strangers? Would love to know if you have any funny stories. Bro. All the time. Okay. <laughs> um, I, and that, not even like, I, I don't even know if it would be funny. Uh, but just like, um, the, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be good. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay. So like, so my friend uh, goes, hey, man, can you do me a favor? And, uh, you know, um, basically keep the, I forget how he said it. Keep the... Um, Oh, uh, were you at the first um, turn up thing that they did at Grindstone? I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Harv. Yeah, yeah. So Harv's my boy. And he goes, can you keep the legend, that's what I think he said, of Hollywood Harv alive by doing me a solid? There's a guy that I know that's in the same city as you're doing these theater shows. Can you get this guy a ticket? Right? I said, no problem. Um, So sold out shows. I get this guy two tickets. And... uh, I don't know what he looks like. Don't know who, who he is at all. Uh, and it's I'm in a very white place. And I go to the lobby, and it's packed. Um, but that's where the concession is. And I'm going to go grab a drink before the show and go upstairs. And and I'm, like, waiting there for a drink. And then he comes up, and he just goes, Hey, um, friends with uh, Harv. And I'm like, oh. And then remembering, oh, this is the guy I got the tickets for. And he goes, man, I can't believe they let a Hindu like you in this place. And I was like, and I grabbed the drink. I'm like, I think what you meant to say was thank you. And then I walk away. Oh, my wow. God. The guy Holy. did not make it to, to my set. 
Uh, as soon as I got on stage, he was talking. I'm like, get this guy the fuck out of here. Oh. Yeah, like I messaged, I messaged Harv too. I was like, ah, he's probably just nervous or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And that's usually the the uh, weird fan interactions I get. Wow. It's just straight racist. No and they're way. just nervous. And like, I'm like, I, yo, your, your shitty thing that came out of your mouth Holy. is is the shitty thing that came out of your mouth. Not because you're nervous or socially awkward. Yeah, there's no excuse for that. Yeah, so uh, wow. like, a, like a less crazy one would be at like one of the last shows I did. And uh, and this dude came and I'm talking to the other comic and he goes, hey, can I get a picture? I said, yeah, no problem. And he gives, and he, and he hands me his phone and he's like, right? And, and I'm like, oh, you want a picture of you? And he goes, yeah, my friends put me up to it and I could see like a table of him laughing. So I put the camera and turn it around and take a picture of me, the other comic. And I go, here you go. And then he goes, oh man, uh, whoa, you're really quick with that. I'm like, oh, I get uh, douchebags coming up to me all the time. Like after shows, <laughs> thinking they need to be funny. And he goes, uh, and he goes, oh, how do you deal with them? Like, just like what I did with you. Have a good night. And he goes, oh. Oh, but like, you know, and my friends put me up to it. I'm like, yeah, and yet you're the douchebag that, <laughs> that did it. You're a grown ass man. You know? Like try uh, try not falling for peer pressure. Yeah. Like it's just normal. Here's the, like I get weird fan interactions because they think they need to do something or be somebody. And like Aziz, after the show. I am me now. You're chilling. Yeah. No, like I'm off the clock. The performance is done. Could you imagine uh, watching a play and then after seeing the person in the play in normal clothes, <laughs> but still <laughs> acting like they're the guy in the play? That's such a good Yeah, point. you'd be like, what are you doing? I'm eating fries now. This is like when I was a kid and the one time I saw my sensei in the mall yeah. wearing normal clothes. Yeah. And I was like, yo, mom, what... What's Sensei doing in the mall? <laughs> yeah. She's like, what the, he, you know, he's also human. He, yeah. he eats, he shops. I was like, but this is, this is weird. This yeah, is seeing your teacher like, outside of school. You're like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, insane. but like, that's from a kid's perspective. And then now when an adult is yeah. still thinking that way, it's like, man, you got to grow up, right? Yeah. Santa Claus is not real. <laughs> yeah. Santa Claus is chilling at the mall. Man, those are yeah. solid examples. You ever had that happen? No, no. You'll get there one day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's been great having you on, man. Yeah, thank Honestly, you for having like, me. This has been we fun. We really appreciate you, man. Like, where can uh, where can our audience follow you? What's next? How can we possibly see you live again? Uh, when does this come out? Uh, it's going to come out. You tell us, Cassius. Uh, uh, probably in a few weeks. Right? Yeah, okay. Uh, at Sunny D Comedy. Uh, at the end of uh, this month, I'll be in Vancouver for most of it. So my... Uh, my shows are posted on my links. So yeah, come out. Watch a show. It'll Wicked. be fun. You got it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Sonny Dollywall. Appreciate you coming on, man. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.